Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quentin here and welcome to tutorial number 30. And in this video, I am finally going to start speaking to you guys about some basic form validation. Okay, so if you take a look at our code here real quick, then this is basically the same code from the previous tutorial where we just have um, this form on our web page that has three inputs so one for you to put in your name one to put in a password and then the last one is the submit button okay so if we run this in firefox then this is pretty much what it looks like just uh, a place for you to put in your name password and you can click login but right now if you click login it takes you to this page that doesn't exist so like I told you guys before whenever we're working with forms we kind of need to have some sort of clever scripting on our web page so we need some sort of a server side uh, file like a PHP file but just for the purposes of this tutorial you guys don't know any server-side programming yet, I'm assuming, because I didn't teach you any. So uh, what we'll do is instead I'm just going to put this action equal to submission.html, okay? And that is another file which I've made and prepared up here. And uh, this is all pretty basic but it's basically just a web page that says thank you for submitting your data so now when we go back to this page and I click refresh when I click login I'm gonna get this little page over here that says thank you for submitting your data so even though this entire web page is kind of a lie because we don't actually do anything with the data submitted um, it's just there so that we don't have to look at uh, a web page that doesn't exist or something like we don't have to look at that error message okay so sadly I have to tell you guys that we aren't actually going to be logging a user in to our website in this tutorial because like I said we need some server-side scripting for that but what we are gonna do is we're gonna use JavaScript just to make sure that the user has actually filled in information before they get let through to the next page so as you can see right now I've filled in nothing here and I've filled in nothing for password so surely I should not be allowed to go on but when I click login it still says thank you for submitting your data I've still gone through to the next web page so that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial we're just going to be looking at how to check that the user has actually filled in some information and then we'll move on later on in some uh, in some of the next videos to just check that their information that they filled in has met certain requirements okay so the way we uh, actually stop the user from going through to the next page is we have to use a return statement uh, and also an event okay so let's go back here to our code and in the top of my form I'm gonna add another attribute called on submit and this is actually an event okay so this happens whenever the user clicks on this button over here. So whenever the user clicks on this button because it's a submit button then this for this uh, event gets called on submit okay and what we want to do here is we're gonna want to use a return statement so we're gonna type in the word return and then we're gonna uh, have a function that is gonna check whether the user has filled in some information so I'm just gonna call my function check info and uh, you can call this anything you want as long as you're gonna use the word return just before your function that's fine okay so basically what's gonna happen now is when the user clicks on 
this button over here then this function is going to run check info I haven't made it yet but we're gonna make it now and if this function returns true then the user will be allowed to go through to the next page but if this function returns false then the user is going to stay on this page and they're gonna get we will we'll put out an error message just to tell them that they need to fill in the data correctly okay so let's go ahead and start making this function so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that copy so function check info and now what we want to do is we're just gonna check the most basic thing okay we want to check that the user has actually filled in some information inside of these two input elements okay so to do that we are obviously going to have to make that value of the input element a variable so I'm gonna go ahead and give these two uh, input elements uh, an ID okay and the first one I'm gonna give an ID of username because it's the one for username and the second one is the input for password so I'm gonna give it an ID of password okay so now we've got our two IDs we can go ahead and make a variable and I'm gonna call the variable username so <laughs> I'm reusing this thing uh, this word a lot but I'm basically just calling the username username wherever we're working with it okay uh, so I'm going to call it username and I'm going to then set that equal to document dot uh, get element by ID small d and the ID that I want to get is username okay so I'm going to set it to this element but I don't want to use the entire element I only want the value so I'm going to append on the dot value property here and that means that username the variable is only going to be equal to whatever is inside of our input element okay and we'll do the exact same thing for password so let's go ahead and copy that and paste this and the ID that we're looking for here is password and we'll call this variable password as well okay so now we've got the two variables that we need to work with let's go ahead and try and check if they are empty so we're going to use an if statement so we're going to go ahead and say if username equals equals and an empty string okay because what happens here is if there's nothing typed into this input element it's then it, it is then an empty string okay because there's nothing typed in here and this is a text input okay so when it's empty or when password is empty so you guys know how to use the or symbol I already spoke to you guys about that or password equals equals nothing then go ahead and do something else if there's something filled in do something else okay so this code over here that we're typing now will only run if they've left these two um, input elements empty okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna alert out a message so we need to tell the user that they have to fill in all the information please fill in all fields okay and we also want to return false okay because we want them to stay on this web page we don't want to let them go through to the next page and have their data submitted if they didn't even fill in any any information they didn't even fill in any data okay but if 
they have filled in information, then this else statement will run. Okay, so what we can do in this else statement is just return true because now they filled in information. So we're going to let them through to our web, our next part of our web page. Okay, so when we go back to Firefox now and click refresh, when I click login over here and I leave these two input elements blank. I'm not going to be allowed to go through to my next web page or the next page. Okay, so I get this error message here. Please fill in all fields. So we have to actually fill in some information before we are allowed to submit the data. Okay, so uh, I mean it kind of makes sense. You don't want to let your user submit data if there's no data to submit. So let's go ahead and just type in Quinton for my name and password. We'll just type in pass one, two, three or something like that because I'm an idiot. Go ahead and click login. And now because I actually filled in some information, this if statement didn't evaluate to true, which means this else statement over here ran and that just says return true. So that just means, okay, JavaScript, let the user continue, let the user submit the data. And that's why we landed up on this page that says, thank you for submitting your data. Okay, so that's actually all I have for you guys in this video. But don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to uh, leave a comment and like the video. And we'll be back in the next tutorial where I will continue to talk about form validation. So thanks guys and I'll see you guys next time.